All right. For this here hunting for now, this is the NAD uh, T748 surround receiver carcass, which we converted to a six channel analog amplifier in a previous video. And uh, of course, now that we got that working, I am deadly curious to find out uh, how this thing actually performs. What's the noise flow? What's the peak power? What's the uh, signal to noise ratio? What's everything? So uh, I've got everything hooked up to the uh, HP339A here and my dummy load for loading it down. And we're gonna have a look to see just how this thing performs. Now I haven't even looked up the specs for the T748 in its uh, original configuration. I think it's like probably rated for 100 watts per channel peak power or something like that, one channel driven or something silly. I'm gonna treat it like any other amp test, two channels at a time, just to see how much power they put out and uh, all the other gubbins on the side. Uh, so I'm not gonna bother testing more than two channels since uh, all six channels are entirely identical down to the uh, component really. There's just no difference uh, beyond the fact that some of them are on a secondary volume control there, but eh, not gonna make a difference. Eh, what we care about is the performance of the actual amplifier. So with no further ado, let's zoom into the gear. All right, so if you're not even know about uh, this uh, HP339A uh, distortion meter, it's uh, an analog distortion meter and it uh, works by putting out a very, very, very clean sine wave on these outputs, putting that into the amplifier and then measuring what comes out. And since it knows it's putting out a really clean sine wave, uh, anything that's other than that exact sine wave, any harmonics and noise and stuff, can be picked up and measured by filtering out the uh, sine wave it's putting out. So by that technique, we can get a very accurate or and very low noise uh, performance reading on of an of an amplifier. Uh, what we've also got here is a voltmeter to measure the output voltage. Uh, the amp is putting out and uh, since we know we're putting it into an 8 ohm load uh, we can calculate the output power. So let's just get started. Uh, I've got the uh, signal generator set up to a line level of 0.775 volts and it should be feeding into the amplifier and there's nothing left to do but to turn off the volume. There we go. Now for starters, I, I, I want to find out the noise flow of the amplifier, so I'm, I'm actually just to shorten the 8, but we're not feeding it any signal, and uh, the HP339A also doubles as a uh, microvoltmeter, so we can just uh, choose our input range there, and see how much noise voltage this amplifier is putting out, and if we move the volume knob around, we can see that it jumps around since there's always some scratchiness in the potentiometer. And uh, that is, what's that, a reading of uh, minus 60 decibel volts at the top of the scale. So that's minus 70, that's minus 75, minus 76 decibel volts, which is, mm, it's, not, it's not a super good result, but uh, it's certainly not bad. For reference, a really cheap, like a uh, tiny chip amp like this thing is gonna be sitting somewhere between minus 60 and uh, minus 65 decibel volts. So somewhere around there and lower is better. So uh, this thing certainly it does not uh, perform absolutely horribly. It uh, certainly places itself uh, within a decent AV receiver territory. In fact, I've seen many AV receivers which far, far inferior uh, noise floors than this. Uh, another thing we also gain with the analog conversion of this thing is if I turn the volume control to the absolute max level there, uh, we're just dropping to minus 70 dB. If you do that on one of these modern DSP things, you're usually gonna have a much higher noise flow. I've seen them go to uh, even above minus 60 uh, decibel volts. Yeah, not a bad performance in the noise department. That's a-okay by my standards. A-okay indeed. All right, now comes the fun part where we may let the smoke out. So we're going to push this thing to the limit. Uh, we've got the load connected up at eight ohms. Uh, we are set for a 30 volt full scale on this meter, uh, which means that we're pretty much good to measure anything up to about 100 watts. Uh, 28 volts into eight ohms is 100 watts. So. We'll put that to distortion, we're in the 1% range, so if the meter moves at all, we're clipping quite hard. Uh, so, 
let's just turn it up and it is going to jump around a bit before we're getting in range which is about 10 volts there we go now we're in range let's just turn it up till it clips it's making noises at me oh no we don't have enough gain <laughs> that volume control bottomed out so we've got to increase the output uh, level on the uh, distortion meter and now we'll turn it up there we go oh that's bloody well close to 100 watts there 28.28 is uh, 100 watts so let's see where we'll get really clean power so we're now at a 0.03 percent distortion full scale which is quite okay we have a very little distortion this is not a bad result there we get that we're clipping that's blood well 100 watt per channel amplifier with two channels driven so i'm gonna call that our point 26.13 volts which translates to uh, just about 85 watts which yeah uh, okay not a hundred but damn well close to it and certainly at a respectable distortion level of uh, 0.014 percent distortion at 85 watts so I don't know can we go higher we can go higher what am I doing All right so it's a 95 watt per channel amplifier and uh, close enough to 100 Ooh, I just left this thing running, pushing a few watts, less than 10 for uh, about half an hour while I was having some lunch. And wowee, does this thing run toasty? Almost 70 degrees. All right, now I'm now going to head and actually check the spec on this thing from the factory. And it's actually just rated for 80 watts per channel. So the power we saw it before was really... Uh, quite impressive considering that uh, and it was spec for a distortion of uh, 0.08% at that power level again we, we saw much better than that so I'm happily surprised it also actually has a damping factor specified of 60 and I've gone ahead and tested that and that's going to stand true for the original NED T748 as well so if you've got one of those hey you're going to have a reasonable uh, spec on that now and it's got the usual 100 decibel signal to noise ratio spec whatever it's it's bullshit measurement but we test it anyway and here's the summary so the noise floor is uh, at 220 microvolts minus 73.2 decibel volts uh, at the maximum volume level not super good but uh, you're never going to use that for full volume anyway so it's really performing pretty well it's definitely not too noisy to be useful at all i'm using way noisier amplifiers all over the place so that's a nice uh, a nice thing because I, I i do like my low noise amps the, the constant hiss bothers me that means i'm i'm gonna be able to actually keep this thing without just being throwing it in a pile of junk and never seeing it again uh signal to north ratio ended up at 102.1 decibel within spec but it's a bullshit spec as always i might explain that later uh, and uh, the gain, uh, I'm surprised, is just 29 decibels at full full volume. So uh, that's actually relatively low for a power amplifier of this size. I usually see more like closer to 35 dB uh, just in order to be able to get the full 8-foot power from a low signal level device like uh, an iPod or something. But uh, for, general, for general use, 29 dB is fine. Uh, there's no real need for uh, some kind of active... Uh, uh, pre-amplifier or anything you, you you can make do with just hooking this to your normal device and it's going to work just fine uh damping factor 133 60 milliohm output impedance that's just fine uh, usually the rule of thumb is over 100 and you're golden uh frequency response works to i think this is dc coupled so it's just going to go down to zero and uh, peaks out at 27 kilohertz uh, fine it covers the entire audible range Nothing wrong with that. And the power specs. Not bad at all for an 80 watts per channel rated amp. And I did actually play it for quite a while. And while it does run very hot, it seems that the convection of the heatsink uh, gets high enough for it to pretty much stabilize at like 70 to 80 degrees on the output transistors when you're putting out a fair amount of power. So it's not too bad. Uh, um, 
I, I think it's going to be a survivor. I don't think it's horribly inadequately cooled at all. Even though I was pushing it to 100 watts, which is uh, 20 watts per channel more than specified for. Uh, now, Ned actually uh, claim on the website that this, this thing is uh, also spec for 40 watts per channel with all seven channels driven. And I do give them a thumbs up for actually specifying that because no one ever does. Uh, I'm not going to be able to test that because I don't have enough uh, dummy loads sitting around. But uh, I, I'd wager that's probably pretty accurate. Uh, for, because uh, from the clipping behavior I saw on this thing, uh, it's pretty much brick walls at uh, a certain voltage, so there is still uh, some... Uh, we're not putting the power supply under uh, maximum uh, current load. Uh, it's not dropping the voltage we're clipping because we're reaching the peak uh, peak voltage uh, capability of it. So if you push 40 watts per channel, I can imagine it dropping a bit in voltage and giving you a limitation on that uh, divided over seven channels. So it's not a bad result. Not a bad result at all. I also took a couple of uh, test points in this uh, power chart. Uh, so the point of this chart is to uh, essentially characterize distortion versus output power. And uh, uh, what this tells you more than anything else is, uh, is this a low noise or a high noise amplifier? Uh, the characteristic on a noisy, horrible amplifier is that you'll see a very high amount of distortion at low output power. Uh, see, I've got some very low output power specified here, just 50 milliwatts, uh, and it, it'll be, say, a really bad one could have 0.5% uh, there, then it'll drop to 0 0.2 and 0.1 and 0.05, some, something like that. That's the characteristic of a really noisy amplifier, and uh, uh, you do get uh, a kind of uh, similar response with higher distortion in the lower power uh, on all amps but uh, it's not an extreme curve. So that also suggests that uh, this is a decently designed power amplifier. It's, uh, it doesn't have any horrible distortion issues uh, like intermodulation or something, crossover distortion, uh, when you're putting it low power, which is it's a good thing. It means it's not a piece of trash. And uh, when we get to the mid powers like 5 to 50 watts, it's really putting out uh, quite uh, clean signals, 0 0.0088 percent distortion is not bad in the slightest. So there we have it. The performance of this Nord amplifier conversion is really not bad at all. And that makes me very happy because that means I can, without feeling guilty about it or feeling as I'm making a horrible machine, uh, use this thing as a bit of a platform to play around with. Because we've got seven channels in this thing. Seven channels which we can uh, p take out about 100 watts out of each, more or less, depending on conditions. And uh, we can drive them with just normal line level signals. So I can add in analog inputs for all the channels. I can add in, uh, make a couple of them subwoofer output. I can make some, I can make a perfectly decent uh, uh, bi amp amplifier out of this thing. I, I can turn it into anything. Hell, I can make it a bi amp amplifier with uh, an integrated subwoofer output for a passive subwoofer with decent performance. And this thing is absolutely fantastic. I'm definitely going to be adding random trash to this thing for years to come until I finally blow it up at some stage. But uh, yeah, that T748 hack. Not bad. Thank you for watching. Cheerio.